Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be focusing on the anatomy and physiology of the red blood cells. Red blood cells, called RBCs for short, are also known as erythrocytes. The prefix erythro means red. Each red blood cell contains about 280 million molecules of the pigment hemoglobin within their cytoplasm. And hemoglobin is a protein molecule that is especially adapted to carry and transport oxygen. When hemoglobin is fully saturated with oxygen, which means it's holding its maximum capacity, it gives blood its characteristic bright red color. Men have approximately 5.4 million red blood cells per microliter, which is a very small fraction of just one drop of blood, which is around 50 microliters, while women have about 4.8 million red blood cells per microliter. There are about 2 million new red blood cells, an astounding number, entering the bloodstream every single second. And this is required to just to keep the overall total red blood cell count constant. Red blood cells are tiny disc-like cells under 10 microns in diameter that are biconcave. This means they have a small indentation on both sides of the membrane. This shape gives the red blood cells a high surface area to volume ratio, which means they have lots of membrane packed into a very small space. Because of this shape, they can more easily take in and release oxygen gas. They have a tough but flexible cell membrane, which allows them to withstand lots of wear and tear as they circulate through the blood vessels as you see in this photograph, it's a cross-section through a microscopic capillary where pretty much the diameter of the capillary is just enough to allow red blood cells to move through roughly single file and look at even how the shape has to kind of fold up a little bit for it to move through efficiently. The red blood cells do not have a nucleus or organelles, which means they cannot divide or repair themselves if damaged, and they have a very simple and limited metabolism. This major lack of internal cellular structures gives red blood cells more room for the hemoglobin molecules. In fact, over one-third of a red blood cell's mass consists of their millions of hemoglobin molecules. Since most of the cytoplasm in a red blood cell is filled with hemoglobin, they have become incredibly well adapted to transport oxygen gas through the body. They produce their ATP through anaerobic respiration without the use of oxygen, so they don't consume any of the oxygen that they are transporting. Each hemoglobin molecule is made up of two main parts, the heme portion and the globin portion. The globin portion, shown here in blue, is the protein part of the molecule and is made of four polypeptide subunits, which gives it a quaternary protein structure. Heme is the ring-like, non-protein pigment that is attached to each chain. There is an iron ion in the center of each of the heme rings, which is the binding site for oxygen as it is picked up from the lungs and transported through the bloodstream. Since there are four heme groups in one molecule of hemoglobin, up to four molecules of oxygen can be transported at any given time. Think of hemoglobin as a small shuttle for oxygen with enough seats for four passengers, the oxygen molecules. When a hemoglobin molecule binds to its maximum four oxygen molecules, it is said to be saturated and in an oxyhemoglobin state. The iron-oxygen reaction is also reversible, allowing oxygen to be released from hemoglobin to the body cells. Now hemoglobin is in a deoxyhemoglobin state. 
In addition to oxygen, the red blood cell's hemoglobin also transports about a quarter of the body's carbon dioxide. It picks up the CO2 from body cells through the capillary beds and binds much of it to the globin portion of the hemoglobin molecule, then releases it once blood reaches the lungs. Another function of hemoglobin is that it helps regulate blood pressure and blood flow through its transport of nitric oxide, NO, a gaseous hormone made of one nitrogen and one oxygen atom, and this is produced by the blood vessel's own endothelial tissue, which are the cells that form the inner lining of the vessel. Hemoglobin can release nitric oxide, which relaxes the smooth muscle in the blood vessel wall, causing them to undergo vasodilation, which increases their diameter. This helps lower blood pressure, improve blood flow, and brings more oxygen to body cells near the point of nitric oxide release. The enzyme carbonic anhydrase is also found in blood and is a critical part of the buffering system in extracellular fluid, which helps maintain blood pH around 7.4. Carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the reaction, combining carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid, H2CO3, which is then dissociated, or breaks apart, into its ions, both hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion, HCO3. By transforming CO2 into bicarbonate ion, 70% of the CO2 can be carried in the blood plasma to the lungs to be exhaled out of the body.